What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm back in the studio and I'm gonna be doing a Mark II tutorial for you guys. This one is actually specifically for the Mark II because it uses the waveform viewer. So it can be applied to other SPs, but you'll see what I mean when I get into this one. So I've got the Mark II out here. I'll set the mic up, I'll get the lights on. And I'm actually pretty hyped about this video because this is the first time I've used my new phone for the top-down camera. So let me know if you can see a difference. I think hopefully I should be able to do a wider field of view. So that should be quite nice for the channel. So yeah, I'm gonna get everything set up and we can get into this tutorial. Right guys, so here we are at the top down view back to normal. It feels very, very cool to be back doing these videos again. It's been really nice having a break obviously, but to get back here and be putting out these tutorials for you guys is great. And as I've already mentioned in my previous video, there's gonna be a lot of different content this year and I'm really, really excited about it. So this is what the shot looks like with this wide angle. It's absolutely insane how wide this angle is on the new iPhone. But unfortunately, it is a little bit impractical for these tutorials because I need to usually be zooming into the buttons or the screen and it's a bit too far away. So I did some experimentation earlier and when I zoomed in, it was a bit distorted, although I was filming in the wrong quality. I was filming in 1080p. This is being filmed in 4K now, but I will jump to the normal view now. And hopefully things are looking a lot clearer for you guys. One of the things that this has also got this new camera on the iPhone is it's got lens correction. So the videos hopefully won't have that horrible distortion anymore. This actually looks really nice when I'm looking at the screen. Hopefully it looks good when it's actually in edit. So anyway, let's get on to the point of the video. The first tutorial of 2022. And I want to show you guys how you can use a drum sound as a marker so that you can chop a lot faster. Now, through my experimentations with this, what I've noticed is with drum loops, this is insanely useful. It's really, really good. If you're resampling samples and drums, it's not quite as effective, but it still is useful. So I'll show you through the technique now, and I can't remember what pack these drums are from, unfortunately, but they're definitely from one of my SP packs. You can check those out on spvids.com, and obviously it helps support what I'm doing here. It really, really does go a long way. So these are the drum sounds. And what I'll do first is show you this technique. And by the way, I want to mention that this was actually left by someone in the comments about the SX. It can be used on the older devices as well. And so I just want to say thanks to that user for leaving this comment. I can't remember the name, unfortunately, but it is a big help when you're resampling on the older units. But I'll talk about that more later because I'll show you what it is first. On this device now, because we can look at the waveform, it's so useful. So what I'm going to do is play a drum loop and then I'm going to add a marker in time at the end of the loop that I can use as a marker to chop with. So I'll play what I'm gonna do and then I'll record it afterwards. So this is exactly what I'm gonna do when I resample this drum loop. So did you hear that kick on its own? That will be the marker for where we chop. So I'm gonna go ahead and resample that. It might not be exactly the same beat. So I've got resample highlighted. I'm gonna press 11 and then it says press of any pad to start basically. Okay, and it doesn't matter when you press record afterwards because that's gonna get trimmed off, so you don't need to be super accurate with that. So we'll go to start and end, and I'll zoom in with my camera, and you can see here now, at the end of this drum loop, there's a very distinctive piece of the waveform. Now this is why it's a lot easier just with drum loops because you can see the hits so clearly. So we're gonna use the end dial here, which is the red one, it's the right hand dial, and I'm gonna get it loosely to where I want it and then zoom in. And obviously we've got 11 times zoom on this screen, which is so useful and it's really good for this. And look, we can see right down into the waveform here and we can find the dead space and where exactly that starts. You can get this down to one pixel kind of uh, perfection if you want to. So what I'm gonna do is go enter on that and that brings up the dialogue menu and I'm gonna do truncate. It says that's complete. I'm gonna zoom out again. And now I'm going to make sure this is set to loop. So I'm going to press the loop button here and let's hear what that sounds like now. There we go. It's absolutely perfect because what I've done is trimmed exactly before that beat that's in time with the rest of the loop. 
and that means that it loops around perfectly. Now, obviously, there is some humanization in this loop because I'm playing it without a metronome. I'm just relying on my internal timing, but you can hear that that has obviously created a near perfect loop. So feel free to use whatever drum sound that you want to use to do that. You can use your snare, you can use your hi-hat. You just need to put one extra hit in after you've played your drum loop. It has to be in time with the drum loop and then just trim exactly before that starts. So I'll try and show you guys with samples as well. So I'll delete that loop just because it's just for this video. Um, because of the polyphony with these devices now, we can go ahead and resample so much stuff onto one pad. It's so, so nice. So resample 11. And I'll just mess around. This is nothing serious, but I'll just hopefully be able to show you the technique with samples as well. Okay, so because these are set to gate off and they just carry on running, it does make the timing of this a little bit more tricky. So let's hear what that sounds like. So that's definitely way too late. So let me try that again and I'll try and get it more in time this time. Okay, that sounded better, so let's just check that again. Yeah, that sounds way better. So let's go into start and end. And obviously this is where it's way more complicated because with a drum loop, the waveforms are very distinctive. With the samples going at the same time, there's a lot more congestion on this waveform. So we need to try and find the final kick that we put on first just so we can have some sort of visual reference. It looks like it's here. Yeah, it is. So we can see that now. And we'll use the end marker. And it looks like it's this here. Let me just uh, quickly have a go at this and see if it works. Okay, so that's close. So we'll zoom in a little bit more. And this is why I'm saying it's a lot easier on the drum loops than on a whole beat with the sample. We can kind of see here that the extra kick kind of starts around here. So if we try somewhere around here. And yeah, that's not really working for this one, unfortunately. So you do have to do a little bit more experimentation when you're doing it with samples as well. I'll just go ahead and get this nice and looped. Okay, so I had to play around with that and unfortunately it didn't work quite as well as I would have intended, which is obviously not great because I'm trying to do a tutorial here, but that kick does give you a good reference point to start making a loop. And as I said, with the drums just on their own, it's very, very useful and it works perfectly. But like I say, when you've got the sample as well, the waveform is a lot harder to read. It's a lot harder to see exactly where that kick is. So that might take you a little bit more practice and a little bit more experimentation. This is actually my first time on this device this year so far. So I haven't touched anything for, for quite a while. I had a really, really decent break over Christmas. So maybe after a couple of practices, I would get my ears tuned in and I would be able to do that a lot more easily. So yeah, sorry I couldn't show you the best example for that. It might work better with other samples, et cetera, et cetera. But hopefully that technique as a whole is clearly demonstrated in this video and you'll be able to use that one. I think it's super handy and I've been using it all the time, especially on my drums. Now what I used to do was a little trick uh, where instead of doing the kick, I would do record instead and that would make a perfect loop. But I find on this device that doesn't work quite as well. I would basically end the recording in time with the loop and that would ensure that it's a perfect loop. That works really well on the SX, but not so well on this device. So that's why I've started doing this instead. As I mentioned with the SX, if you're resampling, just put one of those kicks on and then use the start end feature to cut that kick out. That way there, you should get a really, really close to perfect loop. And then you can just do the slight changes with the start and end facility just to get it absolutely dialed in. So thanks very much for watching guys. It's amazing to be back doing tutorials. The first one of 2022. Sorry, it's a bit late in the month, but there's just been so much going on at the start of this year that I've had to be sorting out. I've had to be doing my tax returns, sorting out all my bills, sorting out a new phone, sorting out what I'm going to be doing with the channel. So there's been a lot of stuff going on in my head and hopefully now I can start getting into some sort of pattern of uploads. I really, really appreciate your support. Like I said in the last video, it does mean a lot guys and hopefully this year is going to be a big year. 
there's definitely going to be a name change on the channel at some point i know i've been saying this for a long time but i really really do want to get on with thinking of a name i might actually do a competition for that and another thought i had was just to change it to just sp um but we'll see what happens sptv was another idea that i had because I want to just be able to move away from the SP a little bit and work with some new samplers and do some different content as well, like I've already mentioned in my previous video. So look out for that new content. There's a vlog dropping on Thursday, and that's all about why I've decided that I need to get out of the house a little bit more. Hopefully that's interesting to you guys, and that will kind of kickstart that side of the channel. Obviously, the tutorials are still going to be happening, so do not worry about that. These are still going to be coming weekly, hopefully, and then the vlogs will be running alongside. And hopefully that's just a bit more of a natural sort of setup for the channel because as creatives and as beat makers, I'm sure you guys must be wanting to go outside and get re-energized and get those creative juices going again. So hopefully it all makes sense. I'm really excited about it anyway. So let's hope that it goes well. If you want to support what I'm doing here, go to spvids.com. I've got loads of beat packs and there's a t there's a link to a Teespring website underneath as well where I've got t-shirts you can buy. They ship directly to you from the printers. It's a really, really cool setup, so you won't be waiting around for me to post them. It'll just get ordered to you as soon as you make the order. So I'll be buying some t-shirts and putting them in my vlogs a lot more in the new year so you guys can have a proper look at them. But if you are happy with the designs, as you can see on the store, then please go ahead and purchase them. That would mean a lot. So I've been rambling on for quite a while here. Let me just round off and say, keep making beats on whatever devices it is that you've got at the moment, guys. And I'll see you again very soon. Peace.